It is time to bring in Arthur Schwartz, the food maven. Arthur joins us on a Monday morning, and uh, we talk food. Of course, you'll find uh, Arthur here and also uh, rebroadcast on the weekends and online, robinhoodradio.com. Click on On Demand. Uh, Arthur Schwartz, the food maven. Good morning, Arthur. Good morning, and uh, I have a nice overcast morning here. It's going to be horribly humid, but for some reason... I woke up thinking about cooking beans. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, let's keep the stove on for hours. <laughs> That's what I, was say. <laughs> I, I don't know, but you, but but I I have these beans. They're called tarbes. I'm I'm sure I'm pronouncing it incorrectly. It's a French word: t a r b a i s. And mine are not imported. They're from uh, uh, an American company called um, Gordo Beans. Uh, they're online. Everybody if, who likes beans, go to Gordo, because, Rancho Gordo, actually, because Steve Sandro, the owner of Rancho Gordo, is like, I, I don't want to say the American expert on cooking beans. He could be the international, <laughs> number one international expert on cooking beans. If you need your hands held... While you're cooking these beans, whatever beans they are, go to his website. His basic how to cook beans is brilliant, okay? It's got every detail you want written in totally colloquial English. Um, it's wonderful. Anyway, um, and uh, from Steve, well, I don't know him. I really, he's one of the people I would really love to meet. Maybe I have to go out of my way to do this. Um, Steve, um, advises not to that that two years is the life of a dried bean meaning after two years your chances are getting them soft and creamy is uh, chancy uh your chances chancy huh iffy so i these i know um are about to be two years old the beans that i have the tar base or i don't know does anybody here speak french tar bay maybe they're the cassoulet bean. I didn't say that. That's what I really should have said. They're this sort of lima beany looking small bean, grows a lot when you cook them, that are the standard bean for cassoulet, which is this big bean and pork and lamb sausage pot of beans from the southwest of France. If you want to go through the process of making a great cassoulet, and it is a process, it will probably take you two, maybe even three days. So I say make it in a very large quantity. Um, it probably freezes pretty well, but no, it's, it's a good party dish. You know, in, in, in the winter, when you want to eat something like that, I don't want to eat something like that now. But these are really good beans. So I have way too many. I think what happened was, if I'm remembering from two years ago, uh, somebody gave me a gift of these beans, uh, just like maybe it was a 12-ounce bag. And I loved them so much. And I, all I did with them then was, was boil them. And then uh, after they were totally, totally tender, creamy, I'll get to this in a second, I added them to some tomato sauce, some fresh tomato sauce, actually. Um, anyway, I loved these beans so much that I went online, and I couldn't find them in the store where I knew my friends had bought them as a gift. And apparently they're so popular they can't keep them in stock, or in, I would think more in this store, I won't name it. Um, they buy two bags, you know, and put them on the shelf, and when they're gone, they're gone. Anyway, I went on, if you go online, you can order anything you want from Rancho Gordo, at significantly lower price than you would buy it in any fancy food shop. And I bought too many. So I have this enormous quantity. I don't know, like I said, I don't know what I was thinking, except I love these beans. So I'm going to cook up some today. I'm going to put, as soon as I get off the air, I'm going to put a pot up because it's not that hot yet. And I figure I can deal with a cup, you know, it's only going to be an hour or two late today. So if I put these beans up to soak now, I can probably cook them this evening. But I could also, and Steve is very loose about this. He allows you to do, do beans in many different ways. You can just, uh, this is the quick cook method. Uh, you bring the 
pot of bean, uh, bean, beans covered, picked over, rinsed, put in a pot with uh, plenty of cold water to cover, uh, uh, well, at least an inch of cold water, and bring it to a, a rolling boil, and then let it boil for one minute, turn off the heat, and let them sit there in the hot water until, I would say, until the water is just warm, at which point you could add some aromatics, meaning uh, could be vegetables, could be carrot, onion, celery, sautéed first. Um, I actually have some smoked pancetta. That I, Another thing I need to use up. <laughs> um, Jill said, oh, you could write a whole book, Arthur, yeah. on things that you need to use up. Well, I bought this pancetta for another purpose. There are two little slices. Well, not so little slices left. I'm going to throw those in with the beans. And then you cook the beans until no salt. And you cook the beans first at a rolling boil for 10 minutes. I know this is against most advice, but this is Steve's advice, and I think it works great. Uh, I've done this before. You bring it to a rolling boil and let it boil hard for 10 minutes. Turn off the heat. Turn down the heat as low as it will go. And let the beans cook now, probably for, depending on how old they are, I mean, how long you've been storing them. Uh, as I said, try to use them up by two years, because after that it gets to be iffy. Uh, you let it simmer at the slowest possible simmer. Now, sometimes this requires uh, a cover. So you put the, a, co uh, a cover on the pot, um, a jar, to keep it at the perfect boop, boop, boop. No more than boop, boop, boop. that's it. Or a boop, boop, boop. And you cook them until yeah, and you cook them until they're <laughs> thoroughly tender. Now, now can, you can add salt. Can I ask you a question here or make a statement? Absolutely. One of the hardest things I've found to cook properly for me, believe it or not, to get the perfect texture is beans. Well, I'm giving you new I advice know. then, Marshall. Here, I think Steve's method of letting it boil hard for ten minutes. He says in the direction, he says, to let them know who's the boss. <laughs> well, Marshall's been the uh, beneficiary of uh, uh, Rancho Gordo beans, so yeah. he knows what they taste uh, like. Well, so, you know, the, uh, uh, every bean is different, except that this goes for every bean. Okay. Uh, uh, this general uh, bean information. So there are two things um, you have to keep in mind. The salt only goes in after the beans are thoroughly tender. I have tried the method of adding the salt in the beginning, in the middle, and even though there's a food writer out in California who 25 years ago did research on all of this and came up with the idea that it was nonsense uh, uh, to add the salt only at the end, I'm back to adding the salt <laughs> only at the end. And the other ingredient that will impair uh, the softening of the beans is an acid. So to give a good example, when you make Boston baked beans, you, uh, you have to cook the beans until they're thoroughly, thoroughly tender. And then you put them in the bean pot with the molasses, which is acid, and your other seasoning ingredients. It's usually some kind of sugar, or sometimes not. could be syrup. Or, and uh, maybe mustard, whatever the seasonings are, the molasses are high in acidity. So they will immediately firm up the beans again. So then you have to cook them for hours in the oven, which is what Boston baked beans are. They're, that I'm not doing until the weather's better, because the oven, really has to, the oven has to stay on for a long time. You've got to cook them until they're tender again. And the same thing goes with adding tomatoes to... Um, to beans. Only once they are thoroughly tender and creamy, most beans do end up creamy, not every bean, but most beans. If they're not creamy, you either didn't cook them long enough or they're too old. If you're buying beans in the supermarket, is a good thing because, at least in my supermarkets, I can see uh, this, this big turnover in beans. In fact, I, I would say, I don't know why this is, but in my neighborhood, you, even the Worst supermarket has an incredible selection of beans. I'm going to cough, excuse me. <clears throat> so we're, st we're starting off with, uh, with, with basic beans, but I think, and we'll see, 
what I'm going to do with them. But I'm sure, because of the weather tomorrow and Wednesday, is supposed to be even worse than it's going to be today, uh, I will probably just want to eat them as a salad with tuna. How long do I they love last? That. How long do they last? You can keep them in the fridge for almost a week. A week. I think Steve recommends five days, but... Um, so you can uh, one cup of beans will give you about three cups of cooked be- one cup of dried beans will give you about three cups of cooked beans, which is um, you know it's at least three servings. A cup of beans is a serving. You know, they... I mean, it depends on what you're making with it. I, I'm gonna I, you know if I, the most basic thing for me is tossing them with a can of tuna fish, uh, a minced red onion, some at least a little bit of red onion or shallot. And uh, something mild, not strong onion. And I like celery and parsley and yeah. olive oil and uh, either vinegar or lemon juice. Now, I know you're going to get mad at me, but you don't want to do it with the beans because you did after your last, after yeah. your first, I made a whole, I make a whole bunch of beans. And yeah. then, I, and, and then I, I put them in those packs where you vacuum seal them. And, yeah, and and they they hold very well when you vacuum well, seal them. Oh, you can't. Oh well, I, why would I not like that? Yeah. No, I, I used to have months. a vacuum sealer. I never used it, so I gave it away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're one of the few people, Marshall, who actually have used one of those things for a while. It's not a pain. More than just the, what, what happens? The they, they make the it look easy. Thing. They make it look easy, and it's not. It's a pain in the ass, but it does work, and and you can you can hold things really freshly for anywhere from five to six months in the freezer. Why oh, in the freezer? Okay. Why would you in the want freezer. It? But yeah. why would you want to freeze I, You beans? know, I, I don't know. Well, no, I, I, I don't know. I, I guess I have made a, a soup with beans and frozen it, mm. and I guess the beans don't, you know, Degrade. they don't change texture, but, really, do but, they? Eh, not really, but the, you've frozen the The point is you've frozen the soup, So, you, I, which brings me back to how long do beans and last. And it's in soup, so you don't notice it so much as eating the bean for the beans. Exactly. If you were freezing beans, but my other question is, yeah. Do you have to free do you keeping stuff because I am amazed at the number of people who eat food that's like slightly eh. but um do if <laughs> listen i I used to say this in writing all the time, I guess I haven't said it in at all lately because I don't go out but um oh. or I don't go out that much um the most disheartening thing in my life is watching people enjoy bad food. I know. The other thing that is, yeah, it is disheartening. The other thing that's disheartening is I have been watching, uh, I, I don't know what, oh, I know. But never mind. I've been watching certain um, food videos, you know, people preparing things. Uh huh. And I used to love way back when, of course, watching Julia, yada, yada. But the point is, you still have to know. You still have to know what they're doing because you can watch it, but that doesn't mean that you can instantly. I I, I had a clinic on this uh, not not so very long ago when I, I I mentioned it. I'm sure because I'm traumatized. I watched a video on how to make a hand roll, and then I tried to make the hand roll. And uh, you know there is just nothing uh, like the hours of experience, hours, months, years of well, experience. Well, you could you could have practiced. Well, that's the point. You, 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 you get. You could the, do it. You could, you could practice. You could get. A, but that's the point. You, it, it, for as for as good as the video is, you definitely need to practice your basic yes. skills. Yes. Yeah. I don't know, you know. Yeah. So it's like anything, you know. I mean, sorry. You, you know, if you, even if you had a, an actual live teacher by your side. Yeah, you still have you to. You still have to. You still have to do certain things over and over and over again before you get it right. Right. Or before you get it done, like in the case of knife skills. That's exactly uh, I, what I was thinking I, I, of. I think a great example is uh, knife skills require years of uh, practice. I mean, to sh- these guys on TV who you see chopping, ch- you know, like their machine, they be- they they were trained. I mean, you know, they 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 had to do that thing over and over and over again, and they were timed. And you know, in the restaurant business, it's important to be fast, not at home. Right. If I chop like that, I would chop my fingers off. Marshall's chopping. But, I, but I chop. I chop pretty efficiently for a home cook. Right. But you but, know, you know, still, I have students. They come here, and the first thing I always teach is how to chop an onion. Exactly. Because and- there's 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 you know hardly a cuisine in the world that doesn't start with chop an onion. So. That's a necessary skill to have if you want to be able to cook because you don't want to struggle with that. So I see, and I teach people an efficient way to chop an onion. It's also a neat way to chop an onion. And I, we, we experiment with different knives to see what 
they're going to be most comfortable with. I have chef-shaped knives, you know, the chef, the classic French chef knife. I have it in se- several sizes. I have also m- many of those, uh, what are the, I always call it the Rachel Ray knife. She sort of made it, ma- made it a thing, uh, some couteau, whatever it is. I have, anyway, you know, everybody, they look at these chefs on TV with the chef knife, the big knife, and that they think that that's the only way to do it. But there are, you know, what, is, what you're comfortable with is more important than what the chef is doing on TV because you want to be able to do it in, a, in an efficient manner. So, and that takes practice. So I, I do this with people, and, you know, we do, we only have time for a couple of onions there. <laughs> but, you know, and then I say, go home, and this is the thing you've got to do. Make, a, make an onion frittata so you have a reason to be mincing onions. And then, then we make an onion frittata, and they say, oh, yeah, you know, this would be great if I only knew how to chop an onion. Same thing now, for... I know there's somebody out there right now saying, why can't I do it in the food processor? Oh. And, and the fact is, of course you can, but it does, in the case of onions, it does change the, the, the flavor of the onion. I'll swear to that. Carrots and celery, no. But then again, I like to look at neat mints, and, it, and it, I find chopping, you know, somewhat therapeutic. Right now I have carpal tunnel syndrome, so it's not so therapeutic. But um, I don't think it's from chopping. I don't, my, my I don't think any. I think I don't, anybody, if you chop an onion, in, I don't care how good you are with a food processor, you lose some of the water that's in the onion that brings it's out the flavor. It's not that, Marshall. It's somehow, I don't know the science of this. It changes but the, the taste. The, the, it somehow act, the processor somehow activates the sulfurous um, exactly. uh, elements in the onion. Yeah. And it really does change the flavor and the aroma. So, yeah, you know, uh, I, I even I see people using food processors all the time. You, uh, onion and I eat their food and it tastes okay. But what can I say? As I said, it's, I also. I, I, By the way, I, I'm not. I'm not. Ch- I'm not chopping for an army. I'm not even chopping for chopping for a family of four. Although very often I make enough food for four. Um, so yeah, I could say I'm chopping for a family of four. It, it, it's you know it's a few minutes in the day that you're taking out to um, do something meditative. You but have there, to pay attention when you're chopping. There are a few other things you 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 really do, and it's important uh, you know as people get more and more screened to pay attention, even even if you're cooking. But there are a few it's other mindfulness. That's the 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 word the au courant word I believe is mindfulness. I'm I'm all for that, it. Isn't that a Zen word? I think it's a yeah, and it's only been around for you know ever, but never mind. Uh, no, but I mean now it's being used a lot. Yeah, it should be. I, I in fact I remember the first time I heard this was from one of my students who um, came all the way from Roosevelt Island to shop at the Park Slope Food Co-op. And I said, why would you do that? I mean, there must be something closer to home. And she said, because I'm a mindful cook, and I want to know where everything comes from. By the way, you can know where everything comes from and not go to the Park Slope Food Co-op, and I doubt that you would know where where everything came from if you went to the Park Slope Co-op. But this was the first time I heard the word mindful cook. I'm a mindful cook. So I like that, actually, and I like that she was mindful. I was happy that a mindful cook found me. I'm a very mindful cook. Um, I don't use the word to describe what I, I'm mind, that I'm mindful, but I know that I am. You, I, and, and, that's why, and that's why I'm cooking beans on a 90-degree day. <laughs> because you had a... All right, so because bef- I'm very before- mindful that these beans are going to be over the hill any minute. <laughs> so listen. They're from, the harvest, they're from the harvest of two years ago. It's interesting. In Italy, there's the Feast of San Giuseppe uh, in June, I guess it's June, um, is a day when you're supposed to cook, use up, the dried beans from the previous year. And in, this is in the south of Italy. I'm not sure what they do in the uh, There are other things in the north. But in the south, especially um, the deep south, um, they often make um, a soup. Uh, actually, there's a recipe for this in southern Italian table, I'm just remembering. They make a soup that could be like 12 different beans. And in fact, uh, you can go to a, a, a store 
uh, and buy a mix of beans to make the soup, maku, um, but maku di San Giuseppe, and uh, because there's other maku. Um, the maku di San Giuseppe, you know, could have like 12 different beans in it. Now, you're going to say, how do you soak 12 different beans? Well, you just soak them. And you just, they, they do cook at slightly different rates, but you want to cook it until it's really soft. And um, so anyway, that's what they do. And they all, you know, I mean, they do. I'm telling you, people go out and buy the beans to make this because these days modern Italian women and men do not keep a lot of ingredients around. Um, they're like Americans. They're busy working and raising families and, making spaghetti every night. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it's... I, I was talking to a friend about something else entirely a while ago, and I said, hey, you keep some little cash in the house, don't you? And she said, oh, no. <laughs> okay. There, there are certain things just uh, from the... Cash? You, I'm not getting it. What's the... Just, just, you keep certain ingredients in the house. There are certain things that you actually should have lying, well, lying I, around. Yes, like I mean, I have, a, I have a very basic larder. I, I, yeah. I do have to go out... But yeah, you have a I, basic. And I don't, yeah, my basic larder includes a lot of different beans. I, I'm you. guessing, and yeah. and some of them I, last I have for two years. Jars full of different beans. So all after I, I don't know how I'm ever going to use up all these tarbe because I have, as I, I think I must have like three pounds here, and maybe I'll give them away. Yeah, it's a you, give, you know give them away as as, as Hanukkah gelt. Well, then it might be a little, uh, that's a little late already. But you know, All right. at my Give age, them. at my age, I find I'm the last one who's still cooking. <laughs> you know, the last. Excuse yeah, me. I'm the last one the, still cooking. The last leaf on the tree. <laughs> my, a lot of my contemporaries have given up on cooking. And I say, well, what do you eat? And a lot of them say, take out. Yeah, but. Um, I, I have a, a, a friend at the gym, and I, uh, she said, oh, I haven't cooked in. Several months. I said, well, what do you eat? And she started naming her favorite delivery restaurants. And then she told me, I said, oh, I didn't know that place delivers. And she says, oh, we use Seamless now. We have a Seamless account. Uh, is there Seamless up by you? What is or, Seamless? Or Uber Eats or Grub Street. Or I, I don't know. Yeah. There are all these di- different services that run around to restaurants, pick up food, and deliver it. Right. Yeah. Which, which puts so, it- no, we we don't have that up here, but we do have, believe it or not, uh, we do have restaurants that do it themselves. We don't have, but we we haven't got that advanced. Arthur, we just got indoor plumbing a year ago. But, but the other, the, the other well, thing I that know, is breeding, you know, I know differently. Yeah. Except I have to say that one of the reasons I gave up on Cornwall was utilities were always an issue. Yeah. Well, now there's. You know, you come up, you come up, and and then there's no electricity because it was a storm and a tree fell on the line. Yeah, that still happens. Um, but, That's but, what happens when you're in, living in the middle of the woods. But question... Uh, hence you, Robin Hood Radio. Hence Robin uh, Hood Radio. Yeah, people always say, why is it Robin Hood Radio? I said, because it's in the middle of the woods. Well, that's funny. That's a, that's a, <laughs> that's a good enough reason, too. Sherwood Forest. Sherwood Forest. <laughs> right, Cornwall Forest. Hey, quick question, or because... Uh, the, I think we're the, out of time. No, we've got about actually four minutes. We've got, we've got we've got oh, enough wow. we've got enough time for. I'm me to not ask. watching a clock; it's just my sense, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's a, it's a good sense to always feel like you're. It's over. Um, the <laughs> <laughs> sorry, the the great thing or not so great thing about a generation. I was thinking if you're giving the beans away, give them not to your contemporaries, but give them to younger people. Um, you know, not younger as in age, but give them to the next group down who doesn't know what to do with them. So they're at least looking at these beans going, uh... But let, let me say, if they're going to sit around somebody's kitchen for another year, I'd rather they sit around my kitchen. <laughs> I'm good with that. But so here, I'm going to be very choosy about who is a recipient of my precious tarbe beans. Um, I, I'll tell you after I cook up a batch how they're still holding up. And I, if I feel like they tenderize in, in, in the right amount of time, and they came out good. Uh, I, I might just try to push it into November, and I'll make a cassoulet when the weather breaks. I and, and I would, I, and I, I, would like I, I assume it. with global warming that we're going to have a warm October. Oh, you know, I'm so alarmed. Our I, meteorologist says take take take. He he said our summer was a month late, and our and coming in, it's going to be a month late going out. He feels that summer really won't go out of here. 
until the the third, the second or third week of September. Uh huh. Well, here's a question for him. I'm considering going to New Orleans in October, when normally the weather would be good already. I mean, it won't be oppressive. Uh, ask him, <laughs> is New Orleans going to be late too? I'll ask him tomorrow. And yeah, I'll let you know. tomorrow. I would, I would love to talk to your ornithologist too about my birds <laughs> here. You know, the pigeons have been uh, doing some strange things uh, in the last week or so. Uh, I think there was an invasion by the gray pigeons, <laughs> and, and but then the black pigeons chased them away. But they're all going to get chased away because the new celebrity owner of the house. Um, is is fixing up, so I'm assuming she's going to come soon. All right. And then if she walks on that deck, that's the end of the pigeons. They'll fl- <laughs> they'll fly the nest, though. Whatever the expression is, fly coop. the coop. It's not fly coop. the coop. Yep. Yep. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, so I'm I'm off to soak my beans, or maybe just bring them to a boil and let them sit for a while. You could it's soak still your, cool enough. You could soak your beans and your hands simultaneously. Say that, oh well, no, I already scrubbed pots this morning, oh, okay. so I. Is very good for carpal tunnel syndrome, everybody. And, and orth, also arthritis. I thought my problem was arthritis for the longest time until fairly recently it became clear it's carpal tunnel. Now, what, what people I don't do? know. You know, this is my, my mouse hand. And I think um, uh, leaning my uh, wrist on the table, it's all in the wrist. my mouse hand, well, all I is, can, is aggravating. It. All I can say is you just come up with a great idea. If you've got carpal tunnel and you're looking for some extra money, go wash dishes at a restaurant. I t- no, I tell everybody. I, I, I leave the pots. To, I, we put the dishes in the dishwasher, but I leave to do the pots in the morning because the hot water, you know, is very therapeutic right. for my hands. Right. I think the other hand has arthritis and the right, the right hand has carpal, the left hand has arthritis. Right. This is what happens when you get old. Right. Well, let's call the whole thing off. You say to me, okay, we'll All right. talk to you later. All right, well, off to Beanery. Okay, right. Arthur, take care. Have a great week, everybody. Bye-bye. Stay cool.